Hi everyone. This video is for anyone that's never had a professional astrology consultation with Holistic Healing Astrology and myself. So I'm here to go through all the steps and what it's going to be like, what to expect when you get an astrology reading with me. Now there are many steps and we're going to go through the wheel and you have several options. This is the first time in modern history where anyone could go online, punch in their birth time information, and get an actual astrology wheel. The only thing that's missing is a professional consultation or a, um, a professional astrologer that's going to tell you uh, what the chart reveals, okay? So I thank everyone for hopping on board. And uh, my name is Ev Zervardakis, and I'm the founder of Holistic Healing Astrology. So let us start, okay? I will be screen sharing, pausing to make things easier for you to understand. So the first thing you do is you sign up for a consultation. So you have a lot of choices. If you're just a beginner and you just want to see what your natal chart will reveal to you, then you would start with the natal chart uh, interpretation. But if you want a thorough astrological consultation, which takes multiple sessions, that would be uh, five hours and we break it up into uh, five hour, one hour sessions. Okay. Um, but the time is what's important. The more time you spend with your astrologer, the more uh, you, the more information you're going to get. The other thing is, why do people use astrologers? Well, astrologers help you just like when you go to the hairstylist, they help you stay beautiful with the pretty hairdo. Or when you go to the dentist, they help you with your teeth. Or when you go to the doctor. So you go on a periodic basis uh, just to maintain. So the astrologer looks at your natal chart and looks at other astrology charts to give you influences of times in the future, okay? So what we're going to look at today is the natal chart and what it means, okay? And we're going to break it down into the symbols and the glyphs because the chart is broken down into different components. The other thing is uh, you will get a worksheet. And you could get that online. Uh, it's you click on for the free uh, astrology worksheet and uh, cheat sheet symbols. All right. Also, you um, you will look at the different territories of your astrology chart. That's what we're going to look at. And then all the building blocks of the signs, which are the elements, qualities, polarities. Then the fifth thing, we're going to look at the action or the action figures, which is the energy of the chart, all translated by the planets. So we're dealing with frequencies. And as you know, everything that has a frequency, like a battery, electricity, has energy. And these planetary energies have influence on us. And it's a divine contract. It is a sacred contract. It's a spiritual contract that has been designed by you and your creator to come into this earth plane. So the astrology chart reveals what your soul wants to do in this physical world moving forward. These are all your potentials. And if you never had an astrology chart done before, uh, this is why I record it. If you can't do a Zoom, then record it on a device because there's a lot of information and it is information that is good for the rest of your life. The chart lasts for your whole lifetime, okay? So the other and the last thing we're going to talk about is the energy connections or what we call in astrology, the aspects, 
Okay, so let us begin. So when you have a consultation with me, um, you are going to share the screen with me through a Zoom. The Zoom will be recorded. And I invite you to ask questions and to help me by telling me that it resonates or does not resonate. And so this is where we would start. We start with the astrology wheel, okay? This is the zodiac. This is not a one size fits all. This is very specific. So if you were born August 15th, 2023 in Virginia Beach at this latitude and this quadrant here, and I use local mean time. A lot of people pick the time zone or they don't have the option for local mean time. And this will change your ascendant or the beginning of the first house or the whole wheel. Okay. So I'm simplifying this the best that we can. So this is your ascendant. This bold line is the cusp of the first house right here. Follow the big arrow. And the houses are the territories of the whole astrological chart okay so this is the first area of territory or real estate in the natal chart first house and it represents your personality okay so we look here at the degree the sign a symbol for the sign which is scorpio and the minutes this is all precision high math and so that is your ascendant, okay? So that is very important in your chart. Then we go through the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth house, okay? So those are 12 areas of your life that are designated by territory or location on the wheel. Inside this territory of the first house is a sign or two. So right here, the cusp is 29 degrees Scorpio, but it also has, which is this teal color. So there's, it's like one degree of Scorpio is in this house, right? One degree, but that's the most important. And then we have, Sagittarius, which is another characteristic of your personality. All right. So most houses are going to have at least two. Okay. Because I use the Coke house system, Western astrology. All right. Not Vedic. This is Western. Very important to note that Western astrology incorporates free will because the chart does not rule you, you rule the chart. You created the chart and this is your chart to work with. And you have the option whether to fulfill its potential or not to, okay? So now that we understand there are houses and each house represents an area of life. And then we have the signs that go in a sequence always goes in a sequence, specific sequence all around the wheel, okay? So then we have the last bit, which is the energy of the chart as far as the action figures, the planets. These are all symbolic. This means Pluto, Saturn, Neptune, and it goes all the way around. So the outer planets are more for generational or society because a whole group of a generation or a group in society, maybe for five years, 10 years um, of a population uh, are represented by the outer planets. But the personal planets are the inner planets, the ones that are very personal to you, uh, which would be the moon, the sun, Mercury, Venus, and Mars. What also is a super personal component of your chart 
would be the north node right here. They look like little ear, earphones. And then directly opposite is the south node. And the north node represents your purpose. And this is what's familiar and what you're letting go of. So the astrologer is able to interpret what all these symbols mean and all the different territories of the chart. And then the final thing is the blue, green, and red lines that connect the different action figures, planets, or points to other action figures and planets with a specific energy flow. All right. The squares are the hard, the, the road, the journey is more difficult, could create anxiety, whereas these triangles here represent flow. It's like water flowing in a brook. Uh, and it's then we have oppositions, which have to balance and they all mean something. OK, so um, there are a lot of meanings, everything. Every little symbol here has a meaning. And there are thousands, at least 4,000 bits of information that are very critical, okay? So we have the 12 areas of your life. We have at least 10 to 12 planets um, or points. And then we have major and minor aspects, which are the connections, all right? And we have the signs. So when we, an astrologer puts all this together to give you a blueprint or an ant, a owner's manual fingerprint of who you are. And it gives you direction. It gives you empowerment. You know exactly who you are. So if we were to look at this particular person that was born today, we could say that um, it. If there's a specific pattern that some of the planets are clustered on the bottom and some are clustered on the top. These all have meanings. This could be like um, a seesaw, a loose seesaw um, pattern. And then we would go about and look at the sun and what's next to the sun and the moon. And so there's a cluster of planets here that's called a stellium, and it's all in the sign of Leo. So that's how I would start. And I would say, well, there's a strong emphasis here on Leo, which has to do with performance, entertaining, having leisure time, maybe just one, you know, great leadership abilities, but wanting to be um, in the limelight, loves to get attention. Um, or loves children and creativity, loves to be creative. But we also have to factor in that um, the sun, which is where you shine, what you want to be, is next to this energy, this energy, and that energy, which are three other energies. So they kind of all, all group together to make it like a recipe of a a lot of energies together. So that means that emotions, love, money, uh, values, feelings, uh, all you, this person would shine in a very big way in the sign of Leo with the characteristics of Leo being the king. And when it comes to emotions, they be very warm emotions um, of the heart romance love and they love to entertain or they love to be treated like a king or a queen or they like their luxuries or they like the rich life all right and emotionally you know they need uh fire so you know wouldn't be surprised if they had a lot of candles around in their home and then black moon lilith is the shadow side of the feminine energy uh, which also could give this person um, an advocacy type of uh, energy, maybe advocating for children or leadership, okay? So this is, you know, just a rough idea of what we go through, and I would expect the person to give me some feedback. But let's say this is for a pet, 
or a newborn baby, then this is all the potential that the child has. But as a parent, it would be great to know that they have a lot of fire in their chart. What does that mean? You know, they're not just going to sit in the chair and, and behave. They're going to have a lot of energy, lots of energy here. All right. So, and, and a very warm energy, you know, they want to have fun and they want to play because that's what Leo represents. You see, and then you see here, well, Venus is retrograde. So that means that the love uh, would be more internalized first or possessions internalized first and then put out, okay? So we look at uh, whether they're ex extroverts, introverts, it's very meaningful. Then we incorporate the last thing and that would be the characteristics of the house that these planets are uh, living in, which is the ninth house, which has to do with Sagittarius, Jupiter, the big picture, uh, the whole wide world, international, foreign travel, um, publishing, higher learning, ethics, morals. These are some key words, okay? So then at the top of the chart here, this represents your career. This represents your home life. And there's always a need to balance here because they're just naturally opposite in the chart. This represents who you are. And this represents other people. These are your strengths and your personality. And this is what other people uh, that you're attracted to uh, would be like. Now, if you notice, we started this video. It was a Scorpio ascendant but this is real time so this is moving now it's one degree sagittarius so the house moves and the band of signs moves all the time the moon is moving all the planets are always moving all right but at the moment that you were born this freezes and that is called your natal chart okay so I hope that you've enjoyed uh, what the reading would be like. And we systematically go through your house, your possessions, like this is who you are, your possessions, your self-worth. This is all personal underneath this horizontal line, your neighbors, your your immediate environment your brothers and sisters and then this is your home and your roots very strong part of your chart this represents your operating system so this person would be uh pisces spirituality um and maybe um escapism um or anything of the mystical would be very strong in the house that they live in and also uh, you got to look at the planets that are, that are involved as well. So the chart weaves a tapestry of information. It's like this huge um, tapestry with a big design that tells a lot of information. And what an astrologer does is they decode it. Okay. But a good reputable astrologer does not say, well, based on this, you're going to have a heart attack. And based on that, you're going to have mental illness. And based on this, um, you're going to be violent. And, you know, you can't stand authority. It's not that way at all. It, you know, the chart does not dictate who you are. It tells you the tendencies and the possibilities. But if there's something in your chart that you might not like, uh, then you're able to change it, but you selected this chart and you wanted these energies in your chart. So, um, so I explain as I go with the astrological, uh, chart and, um, because when you come back and you do a forecasting and I'll just give you a preview on this, this is what we would do. Um, 
we would go into your chart and then you would look at two wheels together. Okay. So that's what you do on the next session when you meet with your astrologer. If you want to hire an astrologer to help you uh, periodically through the year. All right. So it's always good to keep an astrologer in your back pocket because they're great consultants. They're great uh, for objective information. And I always end the chart with your permission with a card like, um, you know, uh, an Oracle card. So that's the way we do the astrology. And I hope that you have um, enjoyed this. And, uh, and I hope that uh, we see each other again. If you like this channel, be sure to subscribe and uh, give me a like. And please, if you have any questions, write them in the comments. I do answer all the comments. Um, I am able to do that for you. And uh, check out my website, holistichealingastrology.com. And if you live in the Tidewater, Virginia Beach area uh, or come to visit, I do have a local uh, location um, and just either text me, email me, and we could set up a an appointment locally, okay? It's like a pop-up. I have a private office inside another business, okay? So I will talk to you later and thank you again. Have a great day. Bye-bye.